Making regular early afternoon shopping trips to Big C in our canoe gives us a welcome break in our day at home. We get shopping for Quan's family at the same time. Despite assurances that Pegasus would be dry in 11 days, made some time ago, the WAS level shows little sign of dropping significantly. Lur, a local dog, seems to have got used to the water now. When he recognised us, decided to come along too. He can walk in the water to the footbridge and this would be an ideal place for him to keep dry if there was shade from the hot sun, but there isn't. It was a good old dog. Mm -hmm. Down below, lorries and trucks carry workers through the flooded streets as they have done for two weeks already. A hole in the tarpaulin offers some fresh air and a view. At one point, Lur hesitated on the steps of the dry footbridge, but after a pause for thought, continued in the water and walked with us to the supermarket. The roads, now canals, have every type of boat and raft, some made from recycled floating materials, to the speedy clong motorboats familiar to tourists. For those in the Pegasame area that didn't evacuate, the flood has given individuals, couples, friends and families an unexpected opportunity to spend a quiet time alone or indeed pull together as a team heading out for and bringing back supplies not just for themselves but for their families and friends. Lur waited for us outside the supermarket. Inside the most noticeable thing on the shelves was the return of bottled water. We've got dog food, water, rice and eggs now so we can uh, get anything we want. After we'd finished shopping, we telephoned Quan's father and he came to collect us with the canoe and headed for the entrance of Muban Setakit. There seemed to be a lot going on there and today was a special day. Even without watching the TV news, we knew our area was one of the most seriously flooded in Bangkok by the number of helicopters flying overhead in the initial days. All that was needed was a morale-boosting visit from a high-ranking official and Today we got it in the shape of the Governor of Bangkok, Sukhumpan Boripat himself. I've seen his face on Thai TV almost every time I watch the news and have warmed to him despite not knowing what he's saying. He seems to have worked tirelessly day and night since the flood began. The impression I get is he understands and sympathises with flood victims, so much so, along with Prime Minister Ying Lak Shinawatra, have been caught in tears occasionally by the cameras. The media have reported this as viewed by many in a poll as a sign of weakness in their leaders. I personally don't share that view but see it rather as a perfectly understandable reaction from two individuals exhausted both physically and emotionally battling against impossible odds to contain Thailand's worst flood from overwhelming the capital and its inhabitants. The governor was well received in our far from affluent area. An impromptu flotilla attached itself to the back of his lorry. Sukumpan, seen here in the pale blue t-shirt, far right on the lorry. After the governor's orange lorry got as far as it could in the gradually deepening waters leading to Muban Sitikit, it turned around and headed back for Pegasame. The flotilla, possibly re-energised by the visit of the governor, carried bags of donated bottled water on their rafts destined for the more cut-off inhabitants of Muban Setakit. Muban is a community of working-class people, small shop owners, office and factory workers. It seems everyone knows everyone and at a time like this they are pulling together to help each other get through this difficult time as best they can in good spirits. This restaurant has remained open, the only one. Water has filled up his cafe but they keep open as they need the money right now and have a disabled son upstairs. 
the glass factory pumps out water as fast as it comes in day and night. After the first few confusing days of the flood, local residents adapted to their new way of life. Rafts and paddle boats started to appear. Then Thai-style motorboats with small outboard motors. They have long propellers that can be easily lifted out of the water. The motorboats make waves as they pass. The smaller boats and rafts keep a little out of their way. Those without boats make the long and exhausting shopping trip on foot. It can take a good number of hours, each step taken against the resistance of waist-height water. The water, now a known entity in people's homes and shops, is also a place to relax comfortably and watch the world go by. Buddhist monks at the Muban Setakit Temple courtyard are receiving donated supplies to divide amongst residents. Monks in paddle boats row bags of rice to those that might need them in the soys around the temple. Children, despite the health dangers, still play together in the water. As we return home, we pass those making their way to their homes in the opposite direction, almost all looking tired but offering a smile as we pass by. Many residents of Muban Setakit have clearly lost so much in their homes and shops. Despite that, nothing inside them seems lost, sensing the atmosphere of solidarity in the face of adversity, the smiles as we pass by, quite the reverse.